Welcome, you storytellers, artists, editors, assistants, students, content creators, editing enthusiasts, anybody who's here to see what the latest and greatest is with Avid Media Composer. My name is Michael Krulik with Avid, and I'm here to show you the latest features and functions in Avid Media Composer 2025.6. Now, whether you want more control using the new transcript tool in Media Composer, or you have a need to exchange sequences between different applications, or maybe you want to switch your sequence from a proxy view of your media to the high res with just a simple <laughs> click, well, guess what? You can do all of that and more with uh, more speed, flexibility, and control in Media Composer 2025.6. So why do we go ahead and jump in and take a look and see what's, what's new in the Avid? Now, in a world of high-resolution content, whether you're working with HD, 2K, 4K, 8K, raw media, whatever you're working with, speed and efficiency is everything. Typically, you would and still can transcode media to a DNX or a more efficient codec to craft your story. But in Media Composer 2025.6, we now support dual resolution linking, where a single clip can reference both high resolution and proxy media. This enables seamless switching between full quality and a lightweight proxy for improved performance in remote or resource constrained environments. And this is available if you're editing with Media Composer Ultimate or Media Composer Enterprise and also if you're working on-prem or with a remote Nexus environment. Now, the great thing is this is very similar to transcoding, but with a much easier way to relink. Let me show you. So let's take a look at the proxy workflow in action. So, of course, I'm in Media Composer. I do have different types of media here. I have my, uh, H my standard HD media. I have some red RAW files. I also have some... Uh, high-res 5K media as well. But one thing I want to point out is, you know, of course, we, we don't know what type of system you're working with. We don't know your processors. We don't know PC, Mac, you know, whatever. So we want you to be able to work efficiently with any type of format. So you'll see here a couple of things. If I go in and look at this 5K clip, let's see if I can play it. Okay, it seems to play okay. Again, this is just a single clip. But you'll notice if I scrub through the clip, it's a little jumpy. It's again trying to access a, a high-res file. But I also want to point out that if you take a look at the bin right here, you'll see that several of these clips uh, have this little orange highlight on them. You'll also see that there are different columns here telling me what media has proxy, uh, what media has proxy files created on it and what files do not. So if we take a look, you know, at all of these, I have, you know, proxy media for all the HD media. I have proxy media for the red files. I don't have proxy media for all of the 5K uh, files yet. But what's really nice is, of course, I'm working in high res right now. You can see by all the different colors and the colors in the timeline. But at any point, I could right click on the play button and switch. You see how it's set to high res uh, high resolution only. If I go to proxy preferred, all of my media switches to the proxy files that have been created, the equivalent of the files that are there. You'll see that some of them don't have proxies created yet, but you'll see that they're mixed files and formats. If I start going into some of the files here that don't have proxy media created, it is getting a little jumpy, but I can go ahead and play any of that media. Let me go ahead and just mute the audio, just so you can see it playing back. And if I do want to create proxy media, let's go ahead and choose my files here in my bin, right click and create proxies. Now what this does is again creates proxies. It creates two file formats, DNX HRLB and H.264. And dependent on how you're displaying or what your display quality is, whether it's full green mode, whether it's half yellow, half green, it's going to choose what format proxy it should be using. Now you'll notice it did create the proxy media. The proxy media, because I said proxies preferred, now everything is now proxy. And I can now 
play and scrub through that media, that file that I had before here, since I'm now in proxy mode, look at how smooth I'm now scrubbing through that file. If I go back and go back to high resolution, you'll see everything switches to high res, and I am getting a little, you know, sort of sluggishness to that file. But I've instantly switched back to the high res media if I want to do any finishing, uh, if I want to export, you know, anything that I want. But at any point, again, switch to the proxy, and I'm now working in proxy mode. You'll also see again here, it filled in the proxy video file to H.264. If I change my display to be draft quality, you'll notice it now changes to the DNxHR equivalent of that exact same media. So again, a very efficient way to work with the proxy workflow. Instantaneous or zero relink to proxy media, just again by quickly switching back and forth at any time. I could also, if I have a mix of media that is high res and some proxy, I could choose the sequence and say create proxies just for the media that I've cut into my timeline. All dependent on how you want to work. What's also nice about this is if you want to pack and go your media, you want to you know, give the proxy media to somebody else so that they can edit and then just send back a sequence, I can go and choose my sequence, select Right above Create Proxies, we have Copy Media. And I can say, give me the proxy media for my project and the bins onto, you know, maybe an external drive that I've uh, connected to or a Nexus workspace, you know, whatever I want, and then move just that proxy media, give it to somebody else. Again, it's using that same time code, everything that, you know, I've cut into Media Composer just send that sequence back to the uh, system that has the high-res media and simply switch it back to the high-res to see any changes that were made to that sequence. But again, the proxy workflow, zero relink from proxy to high-res in Media Composer Ultimate and Media Composer Enterprise with Media Composer 2025.6. The new AI-powered transcript tools in Media Composer have basically changed the way editors view and edit their footage. And many of them are saying that it has become an invaluable part of their creative process. In 2025.6, we continue to make improvements with the transcript tools and how you can manage your transcripts. Transcript settings are easier to access in Media Composer 2025.6 with include and exclude bin and transcription settings accessible from the bin top menu. And if you need to start or stop phrase find AI indexing at any point, rather than heading to the settings to set this, just use the transcript tool fast menu. With many editors choosing to be more keyboard driven for better precision with word selection, you can hold down the shift key on the keyboard and use the arrow keys, right or left, to make a word-by-word -word selection in your transcript. And if you need to grab a sentence or quote from a transcription, being able to copy and paste text has also been improved, which uses plain text formatting for consistent pasting across applications. You can now delete individual transcripts for a clip from both the Transcript Tool Fast menu and Context menu. This will reduce processing time when you may need to reprocess a single clip rather than deleting the entire project's transcripts. If you choose to delete a transcript for a group clip, it will delete the transcript associated with the clip currently selected in the group. The language hint that was introduced in Media Composer 2024.2 and found in the transcript settings allows you to choose what language you prefer the audio to be transcribed in. 
So if somebody with a French accent is speaking English, you may want to hint that the transcription be in English rather than French, as it may sense the accent. Beginning in Media Composer 2025.6, all languages share a single transcript index, which improves predictability, simplifies collaboration across systems, and removes the need to manage multiple language-specific transcript states. Last year, we added the ability to instantly create subtitles in your timeline from the transcribed sequence. But there may be an instance where you may only need subtitles over a portion of your edit. Media Composer 2025.6 introduces the Use Marks option in the Create Subcap function, allowing users to generate captions only within a marked section of the timeline. What I love about what we do in the shadows is it is absolutely ridiculous. It is now this is ideal for those points in your sequence where somebody may be whispering. There could be a section of your timeline where you made some updates that need to have the subtitles revised, or maybe captioning a specific scene, but you don't want to affect the rest of your timeline. We've also made a couple of enhancements with the Avid Titler Plus. To easily identify what your titles are in your sequence, simply turn on the title text from the Timeline Fast menu, making it easier to identify and distinguish between title segments. In addition, users can quickly locate titles using the Timeline and Monitor panel in the Find window or from the Timeline search bar. And when exporting an edit decision list, all titles used in the timeline can be exported as part of the EDL. Each Titler Plus effect is assigned a dedicated event timecode and a unique name based on the clip text label, making it easy to identify and reference in post-production workflows. The Auto Sequence function in Avid Media Composer automatically creates a timeline or sequence from selected clips in a bin, usually based on their start timecode. Spot to time code will take a sequence and cut it into the sequence based on the time code as well. Both of these functions can create overlaps if used on multiple sources that share the same time code. Rather than auto sequencing the audio and video media separately and manually cutting the tracks together, the new auto sequence and spot to time code using camera column function, now in 2025.6, uses the camera column data in a bin in conjunction with the auto sequence and spot to time code to distinguish between different sources and automatically place the corresponding clips on separate tracks. Distinct values are separated, speeding up daily sync processes or mix placement, which I feel many editors and really many assistants will actually love. Are you familiar with OpenTimeline.io? It is part of an open source community that has members from Pixar, Netflix, Disney, as well as other studios and manufacturers. And it's designed to share editorial data like cuts, tracks, and transitions between different video editing applications, VFX workflows, and animation tools. In a previous version of Media Composer, we added the ability to export an Open Timeline I.O. file, but in 2025.6, you can now import an OTIO file as well. This enables a better interchange with supported third-party applications and streamlines collaborative workflows. It will maintain the structure of a timeline with clip placement and simple transitions, and OTIO is constantly being updated and engineered, so you will continue to see improvements with it as time goes on. Some additional features added to Media Composer 2025.6 include the Media Central Transcription Interop. So if you're using Media Central with the new function to create transcripts, when importing media from Media Central, transcription data now comes with it. If a user double clicks a clip or drags it into a bin, the associated transcript is automatically brought into Media Composer and stored in its local transcript database. If you're working with AVC Longot Media, we've added three quality levels of encoding to this codec, fastest, balanced, and best. It will default to the fastest setting, 
but you can change the quality in the media creation settings or when you choose to export your sequences. And finally, you can set a requirement for HDR media when performing a dynamic relink operation in Media Composer 2025.6. Okay, so that was a really nice overview of the new features and functions in Avid Media Composer 2025.6 whether you want to use the new control of being able to manage your transcripts within Media Composer, or maybe you want to import an open timeline I.O. file, or you want to maybe switch back and forth between the proxy media and the high-res media with a zero relink and switching back between those files, or maybe you want to build in that uh, camera data, the camera column in your bin, so your auto-sequencing will build the sync maps quickly and easily. I think you're going to love these features. But before we wrap, I want to tell you how fascinated I am with editors and how they use Media Composer and basically what they do to create these amazing films and television shows that we all love. What's even better is listening to them talk about their crafts. And if you love that too, I want to make sure that you're listening to Matt Fury's Rough Cut podcast. For years, Matt has been talking to editors about their work, how they work with their teams, what they like about The Avid, <laughs> editing in Media Composer, and how they work in the software to edit things like Severance, The Studio, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1 and 2, Wicked, Daredevil Born Again, the, the list goes on. And if you're not familiar with Media Composer and you want to give it a try, you can always go to avid.com and download a 30-day free trial of the software that these editors are using to create these amazing television shows, feature films, documentaries, and everything. So. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day and see you.